A vector is a mathematical quantity with both a magnitude and direction. This is the graph of a vector. As you can tell, it has direction and magnitude, illustrated by both the length of the line and the blue number up in the corner. All vectors can be divided into component vectors. These component vectors run along the axes. In a two-dimensional graph, one component vector runs along the x-axis and the other component vector runs along the y-axis. Note how they form a nice neat right triangle. In this particular graph, the magnitude of the main vector is shown in blue, the magnitude of the x-axis component vector is shown in red, and the magnitude of the y-axis component vector is shown in green. Now when you go three-dimensional, it gets more complicated, but these component vectors are used in adding vectors. Here is how you find the magnitude of the component vectors. For a two-dimensional vector, you need the vector's magnitude, denoted by m, and its angle, denoted by theta. Now, you are looking for the magnitude of the x-axis component vector, denoted by x, and the magnitude of the y-axis component vector, denoted by y. The result is that for the magnitude of the x component vector, we have x equals m times cosine of theta. And for the magnitude of the y component vector, we have y equals m times the sine of theta. Now, vectors do not add in a straightforward manner because you have to consider both their direction and magnitude. Now, you first need to find the component vectors of the vectors to be added. In this case, we have m1 with component vectors x1 and y1 and m2 with component vectors x2 and y2. This results in a simple addition of magnitude such that x equals x1 plus x2 and y equals y1 plus y2. To find the angle of the new vector, denoted as theta, we use theta equals the arctangent of y over x. Now to get the magnitude of the new vector, denoted as m, we use m equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Adding vectors starts with a single vector, depicted here in blue. Now we add to that a green vector, resulting in the red vector, being the total of the green and blue vectors. Now we will add another vector, depicted here in yellow, to produce a new red vector, which is the total of the blue, green, and yellow vectors. Finally, let's add one more vector, a white vector, resulting in another red vector that is the total of the blue, green, yellow, and white vectors. In physics, vectors are commonly used to describe motion. That includes how fast an object is going, the magnitude, and which way an object is going, the direction. Vectors are also used to describe force, how hard a force is pushing or pulling, the magnitude, and which way a force is pushing or pulling, the direction. Here the arrow represents the vector of the car's motion. It has direction towards the top of the screen, and it has magnitude, the car's speed. Here the direction has changed. Now it is going diagonally left towards the top of the screen, but speed, the magnitude of the vector, is the same. In this case, the vector represents force. It is the force accelerating the car. It has direction, which is towards the top of the screen, and it has magnitude, which is shown by the car's acceleration. In conclusion, vectors have both direction and magnitude. They are mainly used when working with force and motion. They are a useful and important tool in physics.